Well, we want to welcome you to a special program here. I just want to quote a scripture quickly before I introduce the subject. And we are quoting from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. The Bible reads, this is God's infallible word. So then you are no longer strangers or aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. Well, there you have it. I'm Bishop Peter Tandamlenga from Christian Word Center International. I'm going to ask our special guests all the way from the United States of America to introduce themselves, and then I'm going to introduce the subject, and stay tuned, you'll be blessed. Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is James Renee. I am from Los Angeles, California, in the United States. I greet you from the United States of America. And I'm Dr. Robert Dinas, lead apostle of Greater Works Christian Church in Los Angeles, and I'm very happy to be here. Well, thank you for coming to Zambia. Um, our subject today, we're dealing with the heart and the ministry of the true apostles and prophets. The heart and the ministry of the true apostles and prophets. That's the subject we are dealing with today. I'm going to ask... Uh, 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 Prophet uh, James, what is the true heart of, of, uh, of a prophet? Sure, sure. You know, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, it said that Jesus Christ himself ascended on high and gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists, for the equipping of the saints, for the building up of the body, so we all come to unity and to full maturity to the full stature of Jesus Christ. So Jesus really reveals to us what is the true heart and ministry of the prophet. It's actually an expression or an uh, expression of Christ himself given as a gift to the body, to the church, to build us up, to equip God's people for the work of the ministry of the occult to, to build up the church till we come to maturity and unity. And one of the things I've, I've had the privilege to minister in Africa over 30 missions in various countries, and I'm so blessed to be here in Zambia. And I've noticed that there's a, a lot of confusion mm -hmm. and distortion of the ministry of the prophet, the prophetic ministry. Yeah. I've seen things such as uh, there's even witchcraft that's mixed in. There's prophetic ministry that's yeah. really manipulating the yes. people yes. And, and, and using the people. And there's prophets of doom and gloom that are prophesying from an Old Testament mentality, trying to prophesy judgment. And so there's a lot of confusion and mixture and hurt in the body of Christ. And it, it really grieves my heart as I, I minister in Africa. And I'm so passionate to bring uh, alignment and bring the truth. Mm -hmm. Because we need the office and ministry of the prophet. Mm -hmm. right. you know, in scripture it says in Proverbs 29, it says, without prophetic vision, without prophetic revelation, the people perish. They yeah. lack constraint. And so... We need prophetic vision. We need we need God's heart, His kingdom purposes and will to be released on the earth through His prophets. And so the true heart of the ministry of, of the prophet really is the ministry of Jesus. Amen. And so that is uh, some of that. And I'll let uh, Apostle Robert speak a little bit. And mm. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and with that, as far as the, uh, the uh, prophets go, uh, we're seeing... Right now, there's a, a, a warfare, if you will, a contention, a strife, because of the false versus the true. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and God really wants the true, mm -hmm. the true prophets to rise up yeah. and let the body of Christ and the world hear their voices. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the prophet hears from heaven and prophesies, the true prophet, I should mm -hmm. say, hears from heaven and then prophesies or speaks what they hear God saying or what God revealing. Mm -hmm. So we need God's revelation. Yeah. need his understanding also um, and so some of these guys that are going around just for financial gain or try to position themselves are m what we would say muddying the waters or perverting mm -hmm. the true and so the true prophets are being kind of marginalized because of the false yeah, yeah. You know, we see this in America mm -hmm. where people that are against the move of the spirit mm -hmm. they find the fringe yeah. the, the kooky what we say the kooky and the strange and then they label everybody like that. And then now, uh, even the true 
is pushed aside when people want to stay away from it because it's mm. controversial. Yeah. So uh, God is doing a move in the earth right now, mm. and he's revealing his true prophets, and there's going to be a, a confrontation in the things of the Spirit where these false guys are, they're going to be confronted, you know, and, and um, mm -hmm. it's going to come down because God will not let his voice go unheard in the earth. Well, awesome. I think uh, what uh, the, the men of God are sharing here is very important to, uh, uh, to Zambia and not only to Zambia but across the globe. And I'm so excited. I, w I want to ask a question because you brought up something. Here in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20, it clearly says we, we are fellow citizens mm -hmm. of the household of faith, but we are built yeah. on the foundations of apostle and prophet. I just want you to elaborate that and sure. just expound on that because I know we have, um, uh, the, the, like the scripture you earlier quoted that we, we, we Jesus gave the gifts to the body of Christ, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But then he here tells us, Paul says the foundation yeah. is, is in fact the apostolic and the, and the prophetic. Yeah. 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 So I just want you to expand on that and then we will sure. go to what um, uh, Apostle Enos touched on uh, in, in terms of subduing the force. But sure, I just want sure. you to expand on the foundation. Well, in Matthew 18, it says Jesus said he was going to build his church, yeah. and the gates of hell would not prevail. Mm. And Jesus is still building his church. Amen. Yeah. And he is established. He's the chief cornerstone. Amen. He is the ultimate, uh, ultimate foundation and the cornerstone. But the foundation of building his church, he says, is going to be upon the apostles and prophets. Awesome. So he's given apostles and prophets to help build his church. They're builders. Mm. They're equippers. They know how to set things in order. They know how to release the... Uh, hear revelation from heaven. You know how to strategize and build, set things in order, and equip. So, those ministries, the apostles and prophets, are so needed to build the church, to build the church of Zambia, to continue building upon and building and building. And without the the true apostles and the true prophets, really functioning in ministry in their office in ministry, the church is not going to reach its maturity, come to its fullness that God intends. You know, I want to share one thing that. Uh, as Apostle Rob was talking about the, the false versus the genuine and the true, you know, Scripture says in Thessalonians not to despise the prophetic, yeah, right, right, right. And, but to test it. Yeah, okay. awesome. right. And so the key, I want to exhort my brothers and sisters in Zambia, Jesus says you'll know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. And so what is the fruit of that person that's proclaiming himself right. to be a prophet? First right. of all, I don't believe in self-proclaimed prophets. Mm, right. let, let the Holy Spirit... Confirm your call. Let the people of God recognize the fruit of your ministry. Mm. But in regards to prophesying and releasing prophetic words mm. corporately, individually, we're to test it. Mm. Does, the, does the prophecy line up with the Word of God? The mm. Holy Spirit would never contradict His Word. Does it line up with the character and nature of Jesus Christ and the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Mm. Does it build up? Does it encourage? Does it strengthen? Or does it cause confusion? Mm. Or does it manipulate? Does it bring fear, condemnation, judgment? And so there's some tests that Scripture has given us to test the, the mm. true prophetic. And so there's different dimensions, but I'll let uh, Apostle Rob uh, respond as well. Yeah. Well, back to Ephesians chapter 2 about the foundation and Jesus being the chief cornerstone. In that time, in that period, the cornerstone was the most perfect stone in the entire building because okay. everything was measured according to that stone, so it had to be set perfect. So Jesus is the perfect one that everything is measured off of, especially the apostles and prophets. So when we look at what is the false, what is the true, if it doesn't look like Jesus, it's false. Yeah. Awesome. So we have all these so-called prophets running around doing these strange things, making people eat snakes, drink gasoline and bleach. Did Jesus ever do that? Well, of course no. So if Jesus didn't do it, then when somebody called a prophet or apostle does it today, automatically, by virtue of that, it's false. And we have people running to the false for this false uh, demonic power just because they call themselves prophet. But if Jesus didn't do it, it's not true. Yeah. So well, uh, if you're just tuning in now, we are on a special program with our guests from the U.S., and uh, from Los Angeles, California, and we're dealing on the subject, the heart 
and the ministry of the true apostle and prophet. So that's what we're dealing with now. Now, you, you have raised something very interesting that I want us to expound on in a sense that there's the, the, the lie of the prophetic that has come in with deception and people have judged that and have seen it that is not portraying Christ and in the end they have also uh, put away the truth right. yeah. prophetic uh, by reason of looking at the, yeah. at the, the force. Law, so right. now, there, there are two scriptures I want to bring to your attention that I want you to help us expand on. Uh, first of all we see that when God commanded Moses to confront Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh demanded for a sign. Yeah. And, and, and Moses threw in the rod of Aaron, right. became a snake, and right. magicians came and did the same, and, but the other snake swallowed the other. And right. there was Apostle Paul when he was praying for the people, laying hands on fox, right. and then there was a magician who came and asked, I just wanted you to expand, because I, I believe as we go towards the end, like you rightfully say, there's going to be a swallowing. Mm -hmm. of, of that which is false. So I just right. wanted to expand on it so that people understand that even though there's been error that has been executed by false prophets, they still the true and we need to embrace the truth. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to expand on that, please. Yes, that's okay. Sure, sure. Go ahead. You want to go yes. Yeah. Well, uh, Prophet James touched upon it, the fruit. Mm. What's the fruit of the ministry? Uh, so we see the false and the question I'd ask, you have these false prophets running around, giving these prophecies, making people do all kinds of crazy things. Is the, are, are the lives of those people any better today than they were before these prophets showed up? If not, then we have to take an honest look at it. What will swallow up the false is when the true prophets can release destiny that changes people's life positively. Mm -hmm. also. Then the people will, mm -hmm. I want to put away the false because doing all those strange things that the, uh, the false prophets are asking me to do didn't do anything for me. My life hasn't changed. You know, uh, there's even sometimes false healings, but I've done just a tiny little bit of research and I've found that many of those people are even worse a year later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa. You know, so God, Whoa. God is not like that. If God sets somebody free, they're, as the scriptures say, they are free indeed. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so the... the the true is going to consume the false just by the fruit of that true ministry. Yeah. Does that make sense? I hope yeah. that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, because you used the word earlier, confrontation, and I think that's, that's very good because Paul actually was so grieved in the spirit that yeah. he even said to them, I'd be blind for a season. Right. Yeah, but, but I, I want to let uh, yeah. a Prophet James to expand on that. Sure. You know, we see in Scripture that Paul was not afraid to confront and call out those that were false, yeah. the yeah. wolves that have crept in. Exactly. And so I want to encourage the, the apostles, the yes. true fathers of the church, need to expose and to call out that which is false and in yeah. error and protect the sheep. We have an obligation to watch over the sheep and protect them. Right. So the true apostles, the true prophets, it says if something is revealed, mm. when a prophet reveals something, let the other prophets judge it. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have the prophets and the apostles that can judge the word, judge the ministry, but they're providing covering for the for the for the sheep, for the family. And so, uh, as Apostle Rob was saying, the, the genuine will begin to expose the false. But yes. we need to bring correction. We need to expose uh, and call it out. And one one indicator that I want to share is that the prophet is not to be a lone ranger. Mm. You know, it says God has right. put first apostles, secondary prophets in the church. So the prophets are to be part of the local church. Right. Mm -hmm. They are to be in a, uh, working alongside a pro uh, apostles. God always, apostles and prophets working together. Mm -hmm. So if you see a prophet that is a lone ranger that is not in submission or working alongside a true apostle or mm -hmm. connected to the local church, part of the, the church family, that's a, that's a lone ranger. Mm -hmm. That person mm -hmm. will, if he's not a false prophet, will become a false prophet yep. because mm -hmm. he's not in submission or a, there's no accountability. Awesome. So there's a lot of ways to, to test it. And, uh, but don't despise the genuine prophetic ministry. Right. Because awesome. we need to hear from heaven. Yeah. And what the prophets do is they hear God's prophetic purposes for cities and nations. Mm, yes. 
And when they prophesy destiny, kingdom purposes, then the people of God can begin to have vision. Mm. They begin to see here. They mm. begin to act upon it. So we need that ministry mm. uh, desperately in the body of Christ. Awesome, awesome. Well, you, you're tuning in to TBN Zambia, and we are discussing here the subject, the heart, uh, and the ministry of the true apostle and prophet. So I want you to know that even though there are so many things that have taken place which are in error by the prophetic ministry and the apostolic, they still true prophets in there. I just want you to look into the camera and speak to somebody who's been probably, there are two kinds of people here. There are those people who have been hurt mm. because of the error yeah. and they're they are almost quitting. And there are those people who are hungry for a word. Sure. So I just sure. want you to speak into the camera. Um, Prophet James and, and just speak to somebody who's watching right now and I just want to let you know you're not watching by accident it's mm -hmm. divine God has ordered your step yes and these people have brought a word to you know zero it into your life and turn around your situation amen amen I, I love that you said that yeah. this is not a coincidence or steps of order it's, it's a divine appointment and mm -hmm. Psalms 139 says that you have been fearfully wonderfully made God formed and knit you in your mother's womb while you were being formed. And he says all the days of your life are written in his book before you were one day old. Every one of us has been created for a divine purpose, a prophetic purpose, a prophetic destiny. So those of you that are watching, I want you to know that God has a plan for your life. He has a prophetic destiny and purpose for you. And he will use the prophetic ministry to uh, bring confirmation to you, to encourage you to build you up and strengthen you. So I want you to reject the false prophets. Yes. That if you have had prophecies over your life that have, did not bear witness with the Spirit, do not line up with the Word, I want you to renounce those, yes. reject those, That's right. and then come under a true apostolic father, uh, come under true prophetic ministry for you to be strengthened, built up, and equipped. And, and I know you're watching this because God wants to encourage you. So I just want to prophesy that God speak and release a fresh vision Amen. That he would anoint your spiritual eyes, Hallelujah. spiritual ears to hear and to yeah, see. Thank you, Jesus. And that you would come into the prophetic destiny that mm -hmm. has that God has for your life. I know mm -hmm. there's some of you watching that God has called you to the ministry. You're sensing that in your heart. There's some of you that God has called you in the area of business and, and economy. There's some of you uh, that are called to the mm -hmm. arts and entertainment mm -hmm. industry to be a light and salt in that industry. So mm -hmm. I prophesy to you that you're gonna you're gonna receive confirmation. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see and hear. From the Spirit of God, let it bear witness to you. Submit it to your pastors, submit it to the shepherds that are over your life, and watch God bring forth the prophetic destiny for your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, fantastic. The Word of God says, Believe the Lord your God, that you may be established, and the servants, the prophets, that you may prosper. Apostle, you know, Apostle. I want to speak first to you apostles, you true apostles out there. The number one uh, goal or number one function of a true apostle is to be a father in the faith. Yes. You'll, you'll look through the scriptures and you'll see how many times Paul and the other apostles referred to their listeners and their followers as children, their children, mm -hmm. and the people close to him as their sons, such as Paul and Timothy, Paul and Titus. Mm -hmm. So if you're not truly fathering, truly fathering, uh, and that means serving, Remember, everything of the apostles and the prophets are supposed to look like Jesus. Mm -hmm. When the people followed Jesus for three days, who fed who? Jesus fed the people. Mm -hmm. And what I see is a lot of so-called uh, church leaders, ch uh, so-called, and I say so-called for a reason, apostles that expect everybody to serve them. Your number one job as a father, apostles, is to serve the people mm -hmm. and to bless the people. Mm -hmm. And when the people are hurting, you go to him. So the word that I have for the people that are hurting is get around the true fathers in the faith, the true apostles that are going to come into your life and give you what you need and build you up and strengthen you. At my church, we're, we're seeing people get jobs, better jobs. Uh, they're, they're growing and they're expanding in their own unique callings and giftings simply because they've come under my apostolic leadership. And there's an authority released from that fatherly place that awesome. brings all my spiritual awesome. sons and daughters to a higher place. So if you're, if you're seeing a church where people seem to be going down, 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 and the guy calls himself an apostle, he probably isn't. Mm. 
Because under a true apostle, everybody grows and goes to a higher place on every level. Marriages are better. Children are, are better. Uh, jobs are stronger. Um, businesses are stronger. Ministry is stronger. People grow in their unique gifts when under a true father in the faith. So my word to, to everyone is to encourage you is find the true apostles and the true fathers in the faith. Submit to them and allow their work to build you up and strengthen you. So, because Zambia is in for its greatest days. Hallelujah. God has called this nation to be a light to, not just to the world, but especially to the continent of Africa. And, and God's going to do it through his church, through his people, but especially through his apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. So you get ready for your best days, because they're, they're, they're right here. We're on the threshold of Zambia's greatest days. Amen. Wow, wow. That's a word. Thank you. Your last word, sir. Um, no, I just, uh, I just appreciate it. I was just uh, thinking as he was sharing how the Apostle Paul said, you got 10,000 instructors and yes. not many fathers. And right. so what a word, you know, without the order of spiritual fatherhood, mm -hmm. our sons and daughters, the church will not become what God has intended mm -hmm. to be. And so I bear witness, and I do want to agree with that prophetic word that the Apostle Roberts is right. exhorting that. Zambia is going to be coming into its best days. And God is going to raise up true fathers Amen. with the Father's heart that are going to raise up kingdom sons and daughters and be able to lead the church into its destiny that he has for Zambia. So God bless you. Thank you for receiving us. Yes. Hallelujah. This has been a special program. Um, we've had our guests from Los Angeles, California, uh, in the name of uh, Prophet James Rene and Apostle... Robert Enos, all of them from Los Angeles, California, have brought a word, and we were dealing with the subject, the heart and the ministry of the true apostle and prophets. Uh, we want you to know that God loves you and cares for you. Don't give up. Keep on praying to God. Call upon the name of the Lord, and He will come back to you. And please remember these words from Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seven: We walk by faith and not by sight. Thank Until you. another day, God bless you, and a shalom, shalom from TV and Zambia.